Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 2, Episode 6 of Mayor of Kingstown. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, we had the whole situation in the prison. Obviously, uh, the AB's kind of making moves because that particular prison has always kind of been more so AB territory. Plus, a lot of the guards, as Kareem puts it, is, hey, they're AB associates or AB sympathizers to the calls. And that situation was wild because, like, you could tell, like, um, Home dude was like, like checking the whole thing out. He's like, yeah, like some, especially when one of the guards goes over to that guy sit by himself and all of a, all of a sudden his cuffs comes off and it's like, it's a knife situation. That one guy got knifed. They're, they're handcuffed to the cafeteria table. They can't get further enough away from him who got free range. Luckily, they ended up like stomping him out. Granted, they didn't get a chance to, uh, to finish the job before the, the the correction officers ended up stepping in. But it's like, man, that sucks. You were literally handcuffed and it was like you had limited range in where you could go. Because the whole thing is like they're waiting for Bunny to get out. It didn't even click in my head last episode that Bunny gave that order. I mean, I don't know if he necessarily gave the... I guess he gave the order before he ended up getting locked up. Because I thought that was something like the AB did that. But I guess that was all Bunny. Like, why... But it's like, what, cause no, cause wasn't the whole point, like, um, that AB did that because it was like, no, cause no, they were the ones behind that, right, I forgot. Kareem wanted to kind of put it on Bunny, but it's like, uh, Michael's like, no, we both know that it wasn't Bunny, that it was the AB trying to, like, make it less black and brown up there, so. Cause Mike's doing everything he can to try and get Bunny out, so ends up leading with him having to go visit that correction officer, Davidson, and he went to go talk to the guy. The guy's like, yo, oh, Mike, sure, come in. He's like, yeah, so what you want? He's like, yeah, you're going to have to leave Bunny alone, and you're going to have to back down. It's like, but that's kind of our thing. It's like, yeah, it was, but I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm telling you, you're going to leave Bunny alone. You're going to kind of like, you're, you're not going to like try and get as much as you've been getting, but they're like, oh, really? And but I love Mike. Like, what are we doing here? He's like, dude, I didn't come here to fight you. He shoves Mike, Kyle busts in, pistol whips him three, four times, maybe even more. Um, it's just kind of, and I love him. But like, I thought you were one of us, Mike. And he's like, well, you thought wrong. And just like Kyle hits him again because it's like, yeah, like I will come ruin your life. Don't ever touch my brother again. And then Mike being like, come on, Kyle. Like, what did I tell you? He's like, what? I was peeking through the window. Peeking through the window. I told you five minutes. He's like, come on. He's like, I need to get you a watch or something since you don't know how long five minutes is. It's like, I mean, Mike could have handled himself regardless. So I'm like, I still feel like, oh, you sure you won't pay face blowback for that? Especially considering Mike literally just told Kyle to keep himself like, all right, you want to tiptoe into gray like Ian and Stevie sure but at least even when they tiptoe into gray they don't go com like don't go, go completely dark side because he wants to keep his brother on the more like because once again his brother has the most to lose it's like Mike is like I have nothing and no one you have a wife and you have a child on the way even him asking Mike like or am I going to be a good father it's like yeah I mean it's like raising the child in this city is super jacked up but you know luckily you're not so because that's his biggest concern. I mean, Tracy saw him building those, like, kind of uh, almost uh, sheds. And he's like, yeah, Mom, can, you know, he's like, I saw the materials and stuff. I was like, yeah, like, so I'm going to build them. Yeah, two more. And Tracy, you see that she's kind of, like, trying to be like, oh, okay, dear. And you see that, like, look on her face, just, like, her face kind of sink more and more and just, like, into, like, just sadness. Because she can tell, like, like he's kind of spiraling. He has been for a while, but it just kind of makes her scared. Like he just needs something to do. He feels so lost. And she, she's cause she doesn't really know how to help him in this situation. Doesn't know if anyone really can in this situation as he's trying to figure stuff out. He, you know, he is spiraling. So, but, uh, yeah, Mike told him kind of stay on the right side of things. It's like, you want to color inside the line? You want to color outside the line? Stay a little gray? Sure. But mainly stay good. I don't want you on the opposite side because he doesn't want his only other brother left in this world kind of going like off the wall, which you kind of already did this episode, which I'm like, that could definitely lead to some backlash later on. I think there's probably also some part of him working off some frustrations from the riot last season. I take it as that. Like, I mean... I don't know if, like, because, like, I mean, I think it kind of runs deep in their family. It's probably something they get from their dad. Like, that that anger, that beast that's in all of them. 
I mean, I don't think we saw enough of Mitch to really know how much he had it, but, like, obviously it's, like, different things create that beast in all of them. Mike was in prison, so he got that. That beast was always there, but being in prison probably, like, fed that beast even more. And Kyle, the riot, probably fed that beast even more inside of him, so. Um, other elements to this before, well... well but since we're on the Kyle subject, let's focus on the fact that we find out he's the one that took the bear bonds. I was like, oh, I was like, that's a beautiful reveal. He's like, no, I got it. Like, I paid the guy off. It's, it's cool. And just Mike's like, there's a little bit of like, well, I'm glad you have them and uh, uh, Milo doesn't because I sure as hell thought Milo took them because it's like, right, that's Mike's trump card he needs that as a play to like act as like yo you want a big fish get what i need i'm gonna hand you a big fish i'm gonna use this these bonds as bait to draw out milo so that was kind of always the point um so like he's happy to have them it worked out but he doesn't like the fact this is brother it's like yeah there could be like cameras he's like dude i know kpd like the back of my hand he's like i know where every camera is it's good i also wipe the footage it's good but it's still like no i don't want you taking these risks because i don't want you once again he has too much to lose i don't want you to implode your entire life destroy your life for this I, he's like I, I appreciate it it's kind of dope that you have my back like this because i mean yeah, Stevie would have gotten to him, sure, but you never know if Milo would have gotten to them first because Milo does know they they are out there, and uh, I mean, who knows how much uh, his boy was able to like tell him because he didn't get much information from the wife or the husband. I mean, he probably got more information about the wife who knows that they were in police custody, but now that they're no longer, I wonder, does Milo know about that? Does he know that they're in Mike's hands now? Does he know that uh, they were in Kyle's at one point in time? Because that could be an issue. And once again, where things left off between Milo and Joseph, we have no idea what the aftermath of that's going to be. Is the next time we see Joseph, he's going to be battered and bruised, or or what? Or is he just going to be cut out of the inner circle? Once again, Mike said, like, yo, you serving him so loyally for nine years. Milo's out and about. All the stuff that you did for him, he can do for himself now. Like, yeah, I might have to creep around the shadows, but he doesn't need you anymore. You're just kind of like second run now. Like, you're not that, you're not the go-to anymore. You're just like, if I need something done, I could get someone else to do it or I can do it myself because I'm in a, I don't need you to dish out orders for me. I can dish them out myself or take care of it myself, which he plans on doing with the whole uh, Bond saying, hence why I thought, oh, he's the one that got to the Bonds first. Would he even go like a more route like that or would he kind of go more to bloody route and, and would have been like a like a bloody scene if it was up to Milo? Like would it have just been it's like a oh let's pay this cop off? I, I don't it's hard to say what Milo's style is because yes we got peeks into him here and there throughout season one but he's still criminally speaking he's still an enigma we don't really we know he can be a psycho that's about it but we don't really really know because we, we only get a little bit of milo like in, at any point in time like only like a, maybe a few minutes at most at any point in time milo's ever showed up you know i forgot to talk about the opening where mike sat with uh what, what's that prison was it warwick or whatever like the woman that's at the top of all that we he mike had met with her previously with evelyn and I think Kareem, and it's like, yeah, so he's like, all right, you're going to help me out with this, the fact is, it's a re-election, like, um, Evelyn's boss, he's going to need backing, and you're, you're, there's enough money in your pockets that you can help him out, and by helping him out, and by helping me out, I'm going to owe you a favor, so that's what you're going to get rewarded out of this, so I need this bunny situation handled, the paper's been sitting in front of his face in his desk, and he's done nothing about it, because he's not so worried about the consequences, Consequences because he's so caught up in his own business. Once again, like, oh, ha, ha, I got the win. I sit away these big time criminals. It's like, you're not thinking about the long game. Mike can see this. He knows firsthand. He's talking to people firsthand who tell him, yo, this is how it's going to go down. And it's like, no one else is taking this as seriously from Mike's perspective, in particular, Evelyn's balls. So to the point later on, he rolls up on Ellen, uh, um, Evelyn's balls, especially after he talked to Bunny. And Bunny was like, now nah, I got to do what's right for me. He's like, don't make any moves. He's like, you did what you, he's like, I had no choice, Mike. This is how it is. He had to even told Carney, like after Carney ended up letting him out of uh, the kill box, as he as he put it last episode. It's like, yo, I need to. Um... 
Like the fact is I don't run things here. Like I'm not top dog here, but basically I'm gonna run things here. I'm gonna I, I might not have been the one that did it before, but I'm going to now. Like I'm just I'm gonna take the crown in this situation. So um kinda had no choice in that regard, so but he's talking to Mike, it's like, yo, because everything's been clear, no guns, no shootings or anything like that, and nothing's come Mike's way, but it's like, yeah, because I took that off of you, and Mike's like, what are you talking about? You put it on who? He's like, don't worry about it, that's on me, then. So that's when I'm like, because immediately I was like, who would he put that on? It's like, there's no way he'd put it on someone that Mike's cool with, so it's like, that takes, like, obviously it won't be anyone family related, because Bunny won't go down that route, so I doubt it, but I also was like, I, he, Mike's close enough with Stevie, Robert, and Ian, so he'd have no reason to do that plus that that i was like so who the hell is he going after jumping ahead a little bit never crossed my mind he'd go after evelyn's boss i mean it makes things simpler to some extent now evelyn knows who she's messing with she sees how this is all going down it's like well it's also your boss's fault he made a deal and he didn't want to pay pay what he was owed i get like by this point i guess that puts evelyn in his position so like hey i think it's kind of implying evelyn got a promotion yay not the way I'm sure you wanted it, but uh, yeah, the job's yours now, which comes with that noose around your neck that, you know, was there before. Now that noose is even tighter now because you're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. I see who I am um, dealing with and I'm in the hot seat even more so because it's like, cool, now it falls on you. They know it's on you now to sign the papers and get bunny out. So it's like, unless you want to eat up like your predecessor, you're going to make this happen. So puts Evelyn in a complicated spot. Once again, you made this deal with Mike. I'm sure she's going to be pissed because she's going to blame Mike for but it's like no you agreed to it i told you multiple times to make this happen i tried to tell your boss to let this happen to make this happen and he didn't want to listen i love that mike tried to blackball him by being like yo uh oh sh evelyn didn't tell you about uh milo's milo's dead is like well there's no dna or anything to prove that he's dead he's out there but you know i can help you get him if you do this now if you don't I'm going to basically tell everyone that you knew that Milo was out there and you, he's like, well, I, there's no guarantee I would have known. It's like, well, I, Evelyn's known. Evelyn's known for a while. I've thrown out the fact is that Milo's more likely alive. So it's like, hey, your constituents and the people who are going to vote for you, they're not going to get caught up in like, oh, like, it's like, no, you were big time boss guy. You should have known about Milo and now a dangerous, very dangerous criminal is out and about. So Things could have been simple, you know, Evelyn the entire time, Mike, Mike, she didn't want him to do that. It could also threw her under the bus in the process, but once he, Mike was like, I'm burning all the bridges because I need Bunny out now before stuff goes down. Too late, it already went down by the end of the episode. Um, there's also, speaking of the prison situation, I love that the, the AB leader comes over and is like, yo, what happened like, uh, earlier this episode? That wasn't on us. That wasn't a sanctioned thing. Someone else kind of got the green light. That's not, not, it's not on us. And to make it clear, they end up like chopping home dude's hands off. It's like, yeah. I, I don't know if it's just like whether it was more a chop. I, they look like they were chopped off. I was about to say, I don't know if it was a chopping or crushing. But yo, home dude walked away with neither one of his hands. So it's like, yeah. And it's like, because um, Bunny and his dude were like, yo, why, why are the AB dudes being so friendly all of a sudden? What the fuck's up with that? So kind of trying to be like, yo, we're good. And to show you that w w this is our way of kind of... Uh, retribution on your part for what was happening so it's like no 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 we're good maybe because bunny because they know like bunny is mike's making moves for bunny so maybe that's why or is it just kind of like now nah, we don't want to smoke bunny you you do you we we don't want that smoke we can there's there's enough in here for all of us to kind of benefit so there's also uh I love that scene when uh, Kyle came home after the whole visiting Davidson thing, and he's trying to like put toothpaste in his mouth. And I love it because he was supposed to meet with Ian, and then his mom's he's like, "Mom," and she's like, "In here, dear." He's like, "Fuck," and he goes in there like, "Hey," and she's like, "I want to talk to you a little bit." She's like, "Uh, dear, so were you uh, working?" With? He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." She's like, "But you're good, you're okay." I'm like, "It's such a funny yet awkward, but also sad conversation because she can tell something's wrong even when she was looking outside and seeing the uh the sheds he made. Like, yeah, she's concerned, she's worried, but she doesn't know how to help because she also doesn't want to push too much because it's like 
right, like, I might do more harm than good if I try, because I'm sure she's trying to handle him the same way, you know what I mean, just like, I mean, just like any mother would try to do the best to help their child, but also the fact is that she's also trying to probably handle him the same way, like, she tries that care and attention when it comes to her students in the prisons, which, speaking of, she taught someone kid, Joseph, who was like, yo, uh, yeah, my, I got a deal. Uh, basically, I'm turning 18, and if I, as long as I don't get in trouble for the next year, I'm good. If I don't, I'm doing, like, eight hard years. So, he's like, and the fact of the matter is, like, the AB is reaching out to him, and he's like, I need your, your son, like, roll with him. And she's like, Miriam's like, yeah, I think he did whatever he needed to to survive. He's like, can you, can you please talk to your son so he can talk? But I'm like... Ooh, wrong timing, dude, because, I mean, I don't know, in general, Davidson sure wasn't happy with Mike after their conversation, so that doesn't seem good. I don't know how AB as a whole feels about it. That might also be part of the reason why, like, yo, like, Mike and Kyle putting a smackdown on Davidson probably might have played a role in that as well, but that seemed like that was more like a AB's leader and bunny situation. That didn't seem like that was necessarily a Mike thing, but Mike's probably not in the best position with AB. I mean, wasn't Pete part of AB? Wasn't that home dude? He ended up popping last season. That actor, like, uh, like, I'd seen him in so many things. Like, uh, bah, 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 bah. he was like Withers in um, the Outpost. Like that guy from last season. He's the last. He's the one that uh, Mike ended up killing him and his entire crew because of the whole uh, Iris situation. They they were the ones who had Iris and severely messed her up that whole situation like i don't i i don't know like i think that was he was part of the ab situation but maybe i'm mistaken i'm but i'm pretty sure he was so that's why i was wondering like was he well I mean, the ab leader showed up because mike asked him to so i'm like they must be on decent enough terms at least then once again i don't know if this davidson thing really skews that is it just like a mike and davidson beef or does that kind of run up the chain to the entirety of ab being like oh yeah like mike's on our shit list now so there's that, but it's like, yeah, Miriam's kind of being that in-between person. It's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll try and talk to my son to help you out. It's like, because she's never really come to Mike about the mayor stuff. She's, you know, it's just kind of like, right, she tries to keep those worlds separate. But I mean, it's like, you, when you're, when it's, when it's the, like, criminal world, like, people who are in that world on whatever level are going to know Mike. Mike's name carries a lot of weight in that world, kind of carries a lot of weight in that city in general. So, of course, people are going to be like, oh, once again, home dude who robbed her did not know who she was. So, oh, there's some random white lady. Had no idea who, that she was Mike's mom. Like, people are like, the moment they hear McClumsky, they're like, oh, Shit, that's that's Mike's mom, you know. So, so I, I'm curious to see how she contends with that. Like I said, I don't believe she's come to him about anything related to uh, mayor related stuff. So her kind of having to ask him for a favor in this regard, at the very least, is like, yeah, have them talk to him or uh, have me move to a different place. It's like, well, Mike's got so many plates spinning right now. We'll, we'll see how that all kind of works out. Other than that, this episode, we also had the Kareem situation where, oh, aftermath of last episode, yeah, one of the guys you beat to a bloody pulp and uh, he ended up kind of in very intensive care last episode, yeah, he died this morning. So, we've got it all back catalog, we're good, we're covering ourselves, but Kareem's like, yeah, but, you know, no, like, there's no going to be any records of, like, oh, yeah, this guy got further treatment later on the checkup, it's like, and then um, Cardi's like, Oh, yeah, the guy just, uh, yeah, he didn't want to seem like a punk, so he didn't want to seem weak, so he didn't ask for further attention, so it's like, we got this, and Creep's just like, leave it on my desk, and Card Cardini is kind of like, alright, and I actually don't know how Kareem's going to play that because it's like, yeah, he was angry at every right to be considering what they did to him, but it's still like, yeah, you're jeopardizing your, not you are jeopardizing, you did jeopardize your entire life and still currently are, so what is he going to do in the grand scheme of things? Because it's like, yeah, he even told Mike, I'm like only supposed to be here a couple of days, sign some forms, make sure like the tent city people are kind of like watch over them to some extent. But yeah, that's kind of all I'm supposed to do here. Now this is falling in his lap. He's not the only one in a compromised position right now because Robert is too. I've never heard the term heart attack letter. Is that supposed to be like a, the equivalency of like an IA investigation into you or something like that? 
Or is that just meaning like, oh, papers are coming down and like the DA or whatever wants to prosecute you? Because obviously Robert's like, oh, it had to be image or something. It's basically like him coming in, doing this thing last episode, which like obviously Ian and Kyle are like, no, it was self-defense considering like the prison was a madhouse. Like you saved our lives and stuff. So it was 100% self-defense. But Mike is like, yeah, I don't think this is coming from a criminal. I think it's one of your people. And Robert's like, no one would do that. Mike's like, all right, if you say that, I'll believe that. But he's like, I would keep checking in and Robert's like, I, I will. But it's like, oh, one of his people might have ratted on him type of situation of like, maybe one of them had a, uh, some consciousness about how everything played out. Uh, how he's Because uh, he was even saying like, yo, um, God, what was he talking about? I think he was talking about the, uh, oh God. Oh God, I'm blinking on what he called them. The heavy artillery, the 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 big guy the big guns that kind of kind of ran through during the ride and stuff like that he was kind of like what about all that and you know we'll, we'll see how that plays out that was kind of interesting like he's you go know, once again I I've, I've watched enough not in every crime drama but I've watched a few crime dramas and I've just never heard the term heart attack letter but maybe that's like a oh yeah it's like no how matter how slippery slope some of your um cop characters kind of get in shows it never gets that bad maybe that's the maybe that's what it's supposed to be in, in, indicative of obviously we'll ultimately have to wait to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode uh that's really all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good